say no, that's carried. And we now move on to the update on the Lagoima, as in the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act Improvement Plan. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to come down here today uh, and provide you with an update on how uh, we are going at implementing the improvement plan uh, that was developed in response to the Chief Ombudsman's investigation that he undertook into uh, the Council's practices and procedures on Lagoima. Um, I'm happy to report that solid progress uh, has been made um, on, on the implementation with an emphasis on not just completing the actions but embedding the cultural change in the Council. Our expectations are to drive continuous improvement so it becomes part of our natural behaviour. When you look at the report and the, 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 uh, the improvement plan, uh, you will see uh, that we are tracking well. There is one amber on there and that's a sequencing issue uh, which will turn to green very shortly. There's a couple of areas of grey on there, which are items that have yet to be started, and that is a sequencing issue, or it's a, it's a timing issue. It's not a, um, a failure issue or anything like that. So, uh, and I might also comment that uh, of those, um, four of them are actually one item, which is to do with the training program. Uh, and uh, I'll just segue very briefly on that training program. Uh, we provided uh, to ELT on uh, this Monday just being the concept for our training programs, uh, which was approved and we'll now go and flesh that out and, 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 and be in a position to start delivering that. That will include councillors and community board members so that all of you uh, will understand uh, the uh, obligations that are placed on you under, under the Lagoima. Um, We've also uh, got a, pro a, a separate project, which is not part of the Lagoima Improvement Plan, underway to uh, review um, papers that are considered in PX and when they are to be released to the public. Uh, that is well underway, that project. Um, it is covering initially the last triennium of council, as well as the, the current uh, triennium. Uh, we expect to uh, have all papers completed and reviewed of, on that time, uh, time frame I've just mentioned by June uh, 2021. It is a large task uh, that requires quite a lot of resource um, to undertake. I'd be happy to take any questions. Uh, the, the question that I had was in relation to the um, to uh, publicly facing information. I mean, the Ombudsman was actually quite complimentary about our public facing uh, process for um, telling people how to apply for official information, for our technical ability to meet timeframes for responding to requests for information, um, but also a lot of our publicly facing, so the publishing of official information requests uh, with all of the answers, um, you know, within a relatively uh, you know, quick period of time so that people could see what questions have been asked, etc. Um, there'll be a number of um, questions that come into the organisation that, uh, that are sort of proactive release. So the, um, one of the areas that the Ombudsman raised, sorry, there's so many actions, leadership and culture. Uh, one of the um, uh, establishments was, one of the approaches was to, um, uh, where is it? It was, it was to proactively release. And the way that the, I read this was that this would have gone to um, the executive leadership team on Monday so perhaps you could give us a bit of an update of where we've got to in terms of that proactive release. 
That's 13A. Uh, we have identified uh, 20 items um, or 20 broad topics that are regularly inquired upon to us uh, in council either from the uh, members of the public or indeed from the media. So we presented that uh, those 20 items to ELT last Monday and they were approved. I might say that this is a living list. It's not just, yeah. that's not the end of it. As, uh, as we go forward and we identify more um, topics that are regularly requested um, or of public interest, we will add it to that list and get it proactively released. So that might include, uh, that will range from things such as uh, elected member attendance records at, uh, at mm. meetings. But th th this is information we already do. So we do elected members attendance, we that, do... That's correct. Um, uh, P -card P -card expenditure. Expenditure. purchase card expenditure, yes. we, you know, our travel expenditure. We, so we regularly release those. So it's a question of looking at the timetabling for the release of that and ensuring that that information is constantly updated. Is that right? That's correct, yes. Okay, and that's so, been signed off by ELT now. Yes, it mm -hmm. has. But what you're saying to us today is that this is a living list and that there is an intention to keep that under constant review and increase the amount of information that's proactively released so that we're not waiting for people to come in and ask us for it. That's correct. Correct. No, that's very good. Um, are there other questions? Yani? I mean, relating to that, can we just get a list of what that is? I mean, are we able to just be told what that is? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't have it off, off the right. top of my head and I don't have it in the documents okay. I've got here, but I'd be but maybe happy to provide sent that. Around. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just. Just the other thing, I know we, we got a memo, I think, just there's been a lot of work done around categorising different types of gatherings of elected members, workshop, seminar, briefing. Um, can you just talk a little bit about where we've got to in terms of that issue of transparency around um, the different structures we have um, as, a, as a council in terms of making sure that we've got good records of those and we're clear about what's open and what's not? Uh, that is not my uh, area of expertise. That is, uh, that is something that is covered by um, John Fulcell and his team. But, but the paper, I, I have found the paper that, uh, that provided definitions of the different uh, categories of uh, meetings such as that. In some cases, uh, these would be uh, discussions that would be held uh, and briefings that would be held for uh, elected members, be that councillors or community boards, uh, to help uh, you form your opinion on a subject by providing information. And in, th in those instances, uh, notes are not taken. Uh, they are, it is there for you to, um, to, to form your, uh, your opinions. And whilst uh, the, the, the we have as a uh, matter of the public record as part of the Public Records Act, we have kept the, the actual briefing. Um, we won't necessarily capture the essence of the discussion that's after that because that is provided to, for you to form your opinions. Yeah, the way that I read the report is that um, the recommendation from the Ombudsman was ensure records are kept of workshops and briefings and the actions are identify those workshops and briefings that require formal records. So and you've talked about that. that there is already an existence of paper that defines those. So we might want to see some uh, follow up on, on that and a, um, a discussion about, about that. I mean, recognising that this, these are legal technical issues under the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act and a you know, that there is a distinction between the meetings part of it and the Official Information Act, the Official Information part, but they are connected in terms of the grounds that exist uh, in terms of when something is in a PX environment and when it's not. So, um, uh, and then undertake minuting of identified workshops and briefings. So I think that would be useful for councillors to have an understanding of when that will when that will be, and then for whatever is um, appropriate and obviously agreed by the Ombudsman, then that would be a publicly facing um, decision of the Council. Chief Executive then. Um, just, obviously there's a lot of work, I mean there's a lot of work that's 
needs to be done and there's a lot of work that's happened and there's a lot of work going forward. Um, and the definition and the kind of updated meeting process is a really good start. But the question I raised when we first got briefed on the Ombudsman's <coughs> report is um, how does this impact our local governance statement that we're required to sign off? Do we have a sense of when the local governance statement's going to come in front of the council? Um, because I guess issues around whether briefings should be open to public or, or, or not is probably a governance decision. No, um, it's not. It's a legal decision <coughs> under the Local Government Official Information and Meetings Act and it is not something that I would sign off in a statement um, such as the one that you've identified um, well, then uh, with, without we... having advice right. on what the approach is legally required to be because we are not... We're not le leaving it so that you could make a decision that would be in, not in compliance with the Act. It's just that in the updated definitions there's an assumption made about the different things and I'm just curious at what point as councillors at the governance level do we get to debate whether we think that's appropriate or not? The updated definitions? Yeah. In the this the memo from Mr Fussell. Sorry? The, the memo from Mr Fussell. That's not on the agenda today. Sorry, I thought it was part of one of these actions. Which is why we got it. Uh, um, well, I haven't, I haven't got it in front of me, and the council doesn't have it in front of it today. Okay. Um, but um, I mean, look, this is a this is a living, breathing process. It actually displays, for me, sort of quite um, considerable progress having been made in a relatively short space of time. Right. Okay. Um, you know, and uh, it'll be. I mean, the next report, I think, will be in a position to really see, you know, the, the, the total picture of, um, of where we're heading as an organisation. Yeah. But I have to say that I'm really pleased to see uh, initiated uh, a whole lot of processes that will now be embedded within the organisation. That gives me the comfort awesome. and reassurance that I'm entitled to as a governance yeah member, but we're not slipping into Sorry, the just, management right. role. Fair enough. I, that's why I come back to the local governance statement, which is a governance role. When are we signing that off as a council? Sorry. I can't answer that. No. And, uh, and that's probably not, um, it's, it's not an appropriate question to ask in the context of this report, but we will get you that advice. Uh, Sam. Hey, thanks very much, Duncan, for your work on this. I think it's yeah, likely answered a really positive story so far of the changes we've made. Just 1D, which is the review of senior leadership practices. So it's got the note that says it's going to commence in January 2020. Obviously, this is sort of written, um, uh, you know, to get into the council agenda. Has, has that sort of started, or would you be able to give us any update on, on that? Uh, I'm not really in a position to give you a, a solid update on that. It is... Uh it's an enduring action. Uh, it's one that falls really on the chief executive to, uh, to undertake. Um, and it's, uh, it's linked into the overall progress of the entire, entire report. That, and that relates to the ombudsman's recommendation as opposed to the action points. That he well, if that's the case, can I invite the chief executive yeah. to perhaps respond to the question? Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so in reality, uh, Sam, fundamentally, uh, even arriving here, obviously being cited on the uh, report. I was really clear from day one in terms of the nature of how we would operate as a senior leadership team. And that absolutely is about openness and transparency. We brought uh, ELT together into one meeting you know, on a Monday afternoon and we're really clear, and I am clear, that the mindset is one of, it goes into the public domain first and foremost and then please explain to me why it should be in PX. So we're showing a different set of behaviours. And if you recall the very first council meeting, when we discussed how the agenda was going to go, I said to members, why are we putting these matters in PX? Can they not be brought into the public domain? We discussed that and that happened. Mm -hmm. And we continue to stretch ourselves in terms of as a team to look at it from that perspective and that lens. That's the shift rather than what has been traditionally the approach. And I will continue in that vein every week. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Well, I guess just, I guess in relation to that, I mean, maybe it should reflect that it is underway. Yes. And it's yeah, got a commencement date of February 2020, but like you say, it's, it's enduring. So maybe we could reflect that in the next one. Yes. Well cool. Thank you. 
Any other questions? No? Um, well, uh, well I'd, I'd like to move uh, the... Um, uh, uh, noting of the progress and, um, and, the f and noting that, that there will be a quarterly report to Council. Seconded by Sarah Templeton. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried.